Hi, guys. So today, our speaking and listening is all about Lesson 4, Reflection in Mirrors. Our primary focus is I want you to be able to dis discuss ideas and apply information gained from listening to text about mirrors and reflections. Before we get started, though, I'm going to read you an excerpt or piece from the previous read-aloud, and we're going to discuss it real quick. From the previous read-aloud, Jack, how about we go fishing tomorrow morning, asked Samuel. Sounds good to me, said Jack, as he stood up to go. As you know, I'm a better fisherman. It will be a miracle, Samuel Van Lumen, if you catch a single fish. So who can tell me the difference between narration and dialogue? Remember, dialogue is the words that are spoken directly by a character. We can notice dialogue when we see in print the quotation marks around the characters that are talking. The narration is the background part of the story, by who's doing the actual talking or the setting of the story or other parts of the story that we don't necessarily see in quotation marks. So whose point of view is this story being told? Ah, if you thought about it, it is actually going to be in the third person point of view. Remember that you've heard this point of view in the narrative, The Wind and the Willows, way back at the beginning of the year. When a story is told in third person, the main pronouns used in the narration are he, his, him, she, and hers. Also, when a story is told in the first person, the main pronouns used in the narration are I, my, Mine and me. If you notice the difference here in the narration of this sentence, Jack, how about we go fishing tomorrow morning? I asked. That sentence would be in a first person because you hear the I in the narration part. So let's talk about the core vocabulary and context words that we're going to be hearing in today's story. You're going to hear angle. Remember, an angle is a slant, or the space or shape formed when two lines or two surfaces meet in one place. It's the corner of something with straight sides. Concave. Concave is curving inward or shaped like the inside of a bowl. Hold your hands up like a bowl. That would be concave. Convex is the rounded or curving outward shaped like the outside of the bowl. So if you build your hands into like a mound, the top part would be the convex shape. Transmitted. Transmitted means sent or passed along or spread through a material. Listen carefully today to find out more about what light does when it hits an object. Listen to learn more about the characters and setting of this story. The next morning, both men were up bright and early, each one looking forward to a day of fishing. Fishing had become one of their most cherished pastimes, and they both enjoyed fishing for striped bass. They had a favorite fishing spot on the banks of the Hudson River, where Samuel arrived first. There, an old, rickety, or wobbly pier jutted out into the cool, lapping water. Nearby, a row of silver birch trees provided just the right amount of shade. There was also a picnic table. Alfie always accompanied them and frequently scared the fish away by jumping off the pier into the water. The Hudson River is a major river in New York State. You find New York on the map, and you can find the, New York, the Hudson River. Hey, you beat me to it, shouted Jack as he walked towards Samuel. Samuel was already on the pier, 
intently focused on attaching a large, juicy bloodworm to the hook of the end of his fishing line. Alfie was stretched out, enjoying the sun and the gentle breeze that was blowing across the Hudson River Valley. Just got here myself, yelled back Samuel. I hear the fish are jumping right onto the line. Well, they'll miss your line for sure, bellowed Jack. Then he laughed loudly to himself. Samuel smiled at his friend and shook his head. If you continue to yell like a wild bear, you'll scare away every living creature, including the fish, said Samuel. Ah, the fish can't hear me, retorted Jack. Question. Why do you think Jack is speaking loudly? Pause the video to answer the question. If you said that sometimes when people begin to lose their hearing, they speak loudly because they can't hear themselves well, you'd be on the right track. For several minutes, the two men were silent. Samuel finished attaching the worm to the hook on the end of his line. Then he cast his line out into the smooth, glass-like surface of the Hudson River and plunked himself down on the edge of the pier. Let's pause here for just a moment. Take a look at the picture for a minute. Can you find examples of how light is acting as it is hitting certain objects? Pause the video to write down your observations. If you say that rays are going through the clear water, the trees are causing shade, rocks are blocking the rays, and the clear water is reflecting objects, you caught a lot of those observations. Good job. Going back to what we were talking about yesterday about light waves, said Samuel, did you know that when a light wave hits an object, three things can happen? The light can be transmitted or passed through the object. The light can also be reflected or bounced back off that object. Or the light can be absorbed or soaked up into it. This is determined by the type of object that the light wave hits. Sometimes the light does a combination of these things. So let's stop here for just a minute and look at this. Which one of these objects is transmitting and reflecting light? Pause the video to write down your answer. If you said the eyeglasses and the glass, you would be correct. Which one of these objects in this picture is actually absorbing light? Remember to pause the video to write down your answer. The object that's absorbing light is the tackle box. Hmm, Jack responded. Take reflection, for example, continued Samuel eagerly. Most of the light that reaches our eyes is reflected light. You see, apart from objects that produce their own light, such as the sun or a light bulb, all other objects are visible because light waves from a source bounce off them and into our eyes, explained Samuel. If you recall, Samuel Van Lumen, I did go to school. For most of the time we were in the same class, said Jack, somewhat grumpily. I remember learning about bioluminescent creatures such as lightning bugs. If I recall correctly, they produce their own light. Question. Who has seen lightning bugs or fireflies in the summertime? Here is an image of a firefly or a lightning bug. Lightning bugs are bioluminescent, meaning that they can make their own light through chemicals they have in their bodies. So when you say the word bioluminescent, what word part do you hear that is also in the word illuminate and in Samuel Van Lumen's name? Pause the video to answer. 
If you said lumen, you got it. The prefix bio means life. So bioluminescent means a living thing that produces its own light. Yes, exclaimed Samuel, laughing as he spoke. It seems that as my eyes begin to fail me, I appreciate even more the things I'm able to see. The science of light is really quite fascinating. I'm sure it is, shouted Jack. However, I hope you're not going to talk all day. That's why you never catch any fish, you know. Samuel smiled at Jack and continued to talk anyway. You see, when light hits a surface, some of the light bounces off the surface. It is the light that bounces off the surface that we call reflected light. Most objects reflect some light. In fact, you are reflecting some light right now, Jack. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to see you, explained Samuel. Not that my eyes let me see a whole lot of these days, he added. Jack glanced over at Alfie, who was staring at his reflection in the still water. Jack laughed and said, Look at the way the smooth water is reflecting a perfect image of Alfie, just like a mirror. At that moment, Jack stood up to check on his line. Hmm, I thought I sensed something nibbling. But there's nothing here, he said. When I was young, Samuel mused, I often wondered why we're able to see our reflection in some things, but not in others. Jack laughed. We wondered a lot of things when we were young. I still wonder some of those same things. Do you remember, asked Samuel, when our third grade teacher, Mr. Benson, brought a mirror and a piece of wood in the class to explain how light is reflected off a surface. He showed us that when the surface of an object is perfectly smooth and shiny, like that of a mirror, light rays hit all parts of the surface of that object at the same angle. Therefore, light rays reflected by that object bounce back off at it at the same angle and produce a clear and accurate reflection. Jack nodded. I remember Mr. Benson well. However, Samuel continued, when the surface of an object is not perfectly smooth and shiny, like that of a piece of wood, light rays hit different parts of it at different angles. Therefore, some light rays are absorbed by that object, and some are reflected by that object at different angles, so it does not produce a reflection. Mr. Benson was one of my favorite teachers, said Jack. Yep, he was one of my favorite teachers too, agreed Samuel. I remember him explaining that because they are so smooth, mirrors reflect almost all the light that hits them. Have you noticed that crazy dog of yours? Jack asked. He's still staring at his reflection in the smooth, shiny surface of the water. He does that, expl explained Samuel. Both men laughed loudly. The sound of their laughter seemed to act as a trigger for Alfie. Uh-oh. He looked at them, wagged his tail, and then jumped headlong into the river. Question. What do you notice about how light behaves in this image? Pause the video to answer the question. Did you notice that the light is reflecting off of the water? How about the shadow under the pier and under Alfie? Don't go too far out there, Alfie, yelled Samuel as if he was talking to a young child. The two men stood up to check their lines and then returned to their chairs. Samuel continued to keep a watchful eye on Alfie, whose head was just visible above the water. He noticed that the water was now full of ripples, making the reflections in the water wavy and distorted. Question. What does the word distorted mean? Pause the video to write down your answer.
What clues helped you understand that the word distorted? If you said it was unclear, the clues were the words ripples and wavy. So distorted means it's very unclear. I remember that day John O'Connor brought a really old mirror into class, recalled Jack. It was his grandmother's mirror, and we couldn't see ourselves that well in it. Mr. Benson compared it to a modern mirror, the back of which was coated with a silvery material. The modern mirror could reflect almost all the light that hit it. Yes, said Samuel, and Mr. Benson told us that most mirrors have flat surfaces and are called plain mirrors. Mr. Benson also taught us about two other types of mirrors that have curved surfaces instead of flat surfaces, concave and convex, recalled Samuel. Oh, I remember, said Jack. We had to draw two portraits of ourselves. One portrait was a concave image, and the other was a convex image. I remember that I borrowed my mother's silver spoons and brought them to school. That's right, exclaimed Samuel excitedly. That experiment was a lot of fun. Jack went on. Now, let me see. Concave and convex mirrors reflect light in such a way that they alter or change the view we see them. A concave cur mirror curves inward and produces a smaller upside-down image of an object, but only if it is a certain distance away from the viewer. Yes, added Samuel, but if an object is very close to a concave mirror, its reflection will be upright and magnified. Do you remember how Mr. Benson showed us how you could put a pencil point right up into the cave of the spoon and see it upright and magnified? Jack nodded and continued. Convex mirrors curve outward and always produce a smaller, upright image as when you look into the convex side of the spoon. A convex mirror bulges outward it makes it easier to see the surrounding areas. Samuel laughed out loud. Did you actually learn something in school, Jack Otteray? I seem to recall that you were always talking, especially when Mr. Benson was talking. Hmm, sounds like a few of you. Oh, I learned a thing or two, protested Jack, and I'll have you know. Suddenly, Jack leapt out of his chair. Jumping jelly beans! I think I've caught a fish, he yelled. Almost at once, Jack began to wrestle with his fishing pole. It's a big one, Samuel, screeched Jack as he struggled to hold onto his fishing pole and not fall headfirst into the river. If you stand still, you'll stand a better chance of reeling it in, advised Samuel. Stand still? Stand still? shrieked Jack as he battled with the creature on the end of the line. The fish is the size of a whale. How am I supposed, supposed to stand still? Question. Does Jack really think the fish on the end of the line is big as a whale? No. <laughs> Why does he use this expression? Because it's hard. He's excited and he's exaggerating. So we'll talk more about Samuel and Jack in their friendship. What do you notice about them? Pause the video to answer your question. If you said that they like to do things together, they like to talk about old times, and they like to joke with each other, you'd be on the right track. For several minutes, Jack appeared to do a dance on the end of the pier with a fishing pole. Finally, Samuel had the good sense to take a closer look at the creature that Jack was attempting to catch. Hold on a minute, Jack. Stop wrestling with that line. You've hooked Alfie by the collar. The poor dog is trying to free himself and you keep trying to reel him in, laughed Samuel. That darn dog should be banned from coming fishing with us. 
He's more trouble than he's worth, roared Jack. Hold on, hold on. Let me get my camera, shouted Samuel. I want to get a photograph of the day Jack Otteray hooked himself a live Springer Spaniel. Moments later, having been unhooked by Jack, an extremely wet Alfie stood happily wagging his tail beside Jack, while Samuel busied himself taking photographs of the two of them. Get away from me, you darn dog, muttered Jack as Alfie shook himself dry. Samuel laughed aloud as he continued to capture photographic images of his two best friends. If you don't put that camera away right now, you'll be as wet as that silly dog, announced Jack. Okay, laughed Samuel. Time for lunch, I think. The two friends shared some chicken and coleslaw while Alfie lay in the sun to finish drying off. I'm glad I had my camera with me, Samuel said between mouthfuls as he arranged the parts of his camera on the picnic blanket. Did you know that some cameras contain plain mirrors that make it possible to see the image you are about to photograph? Those, mirror, those types of cameras are older, not like our digital cameras that most people use today. Yeah, well, you certainly didn't need to record that image of me hooking Alfie, grumbled Jack, offering a piece of chicken to Alfie. Samuel laughed as he began to pack up the picnic basket. Well, you've obviously forgiven him. Did I tell you that we're taking Amy to the fair tomorrow? We? Oui? exclaimed Jack. Yep, that was the deal, explained Samuel. I told her that if she made me some chocolate cake, I'd take her to the fair. Me too, shouted Jack, a little less grumpily. You're going to eat some cake, aren't you? Samuel yelled back. Well, okay then, but you're not going to make me go on those bumper cars again, are you? asked Jack. No, said Samuel with a smile. This time, I thought we would try the House of Mirrors. There ends our speaking and listening story today. Your teacher may ask you a few more questions. As always, remember, you can go back and rewatch the video. If you like what you're seeing and listening to, always hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much.